Greetings and welcome to Pilgrim Congregational Church's live stream of worship. This is the second Sunday of Easter. My name is Colin Knapp and I am the senior pastor of this beloved community. I am glad that you have decided to join us this morning. My hope is that you sense God's presence with you wherever you find yourself this morning and that as we pray and sing and learn together, that you feel a connection to this place and to God, even though we are not gathered together. Thanks for being here. Good morning. I'm Leslie Lauderdale. I am your liturgist for the day. I am delighted that you have chosen to join us for worship. If you would, please take your bulletin and join me in the responsive call to worship. We have not touched the risen Christ, yet we act with love. We may have doubts, yet we work to heal the earth. We have not seen the risen Christ, yet he is there in the faces around us. Beloved of God, inheritors of both faith and doubt, worship together. Would you please join me in an attitude of prayer? Creator God, grant us patience in our weary unease. Some of us have lost loved ones without a final goodbye or gentle kiss or loving touch. Help us honor our mourning. This week, we again felt the cold of snow. Let us remember how winter prepares the soil for spring. We left the Lenten wilderness to discover urban isolation. Parks and schools are closed. Households struggle for privacy. We fear both the masked and the unmasked in our midst. Holy Spirit, breathe with us. Christ, let your light shine within us. Creator God, open our hearts. Amen. I'd like to invite everyone at home to please join us in singing, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. We'll sing verses 1 and 2. confession today is responsive, so I do invite you to follow along with me in your bulletin. Before we begin, I'd like to invite you to breathe and to remember and to reflect. Let us confess our sins before God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done 
and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we might delight in your will and follow in your ways to the glory of your name. And now, my sisters and brothers, receive this miraculous good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. By dying, Christ destroyed our death. In rising, Christ restores our life. In giving us his spirit, he grants us peace. And may the peace of Christ be with you. And now, receive the peace of Christ. May the peace of Christ be with you, my sisters and brothers. Peace be unto you, good health to you and your families. Let us continue to be the church. Turn. Peace and blessings, pilgrim. Peace be with you. Pilgrim. Good boy. He's from um, Charlie, Daisy, and Tuna. And Tuna's currently walking away. Uh, my... Good morning, fellow pilgrims. Peace be with you today. Love always. The peace of Christ be with you. Peace be with the pilgrim people. Peace, Peace and, and love. love. Peace be with you. Good morning. I call all the children of the congregation forward. Today we're going to talk about trust and how we know if something is true or it's not true. For example, what if I told you this morning I climbed Mount Everest? What do you think? Are you thinking I maybe didn't do it because we're supposed to be quarantined and I'm not allowed to leave my house? Or are you thinking that maybe I wouldn't be able to go there and come back so it's not true? Or maybe you're thinking I just wouldn't be able to climb Mount Everest. True on all of those accounts. How about if I told you I brushed my teeth this morning? That would be easier to believe, wouldn't it? Because that's something that we all do each day and it's a manageable thing. So you figure that was true, even though you didn't see me brush my teeth or see me leave to go climb Mount Everest. I have a little example here today. What if I told you I'd be able to take these two paper clips and hook them together without even touching them? I'm gonna show you how I can do that. I'm gonna take this dollar bill, going to fold it in half, going to put on the first paper clip and then I'm going to fold it in half again and I'm going to put on the second paper clip and then I'm going to open it very quickly and let's see what happens. Success! I have hooked the paper clips together. Now you believe that could happen because you saw me do it right in front of you. Well, our story today picks up after Jesus has risen from the dead. Now, that was an amazing, wonderful story. But now the disciples are a little worried and they've been staying together in the same room. And Jesus said he would come back and show himself to them. And he came into that room and showed him. But one of the disciples wasn't there. It was Thomas. And when Thomas came back, the disciples were all excited and they told him all about it. But he said, I am not going to believe it unless I see it for myself with my own eyes. So the next day, Jesus appeared again into that room. And this time Thomas was there. And he said, Thomas, it is me. You can see me, touch me 
and you will see that it is really me. And Thomas did believe. But Jesus said to him, blessed are those who believe without seeing. And that is us, because we can't actually see Jesus face to face today, can we? Through the Bible and people telling us about Jesus and seeing Jesus out in the world, we know that God is true. God is proven to be trustworthy. What God has promised, he has done. So we know that is true without even seeing it with our own eyes. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for your love. Thank you for helping us to believe even when we can't always see what is going on in the world because we know you are trustworthy. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. I'll be reading from the Common English Translation. It was still the first day of the week, that evening while the disciples were behind closed doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities. Jesus came and stood among them. He said, peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And when the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, they aren't forgiven. Thomas, the one called the twin, one of the twelve, wasn't with the disciples when Jesus came. The other disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. But he replied, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, put my finger in the wounds left by the nails, put my hand into his side, I won't believe. After eight days, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus entered and stood among them. He said, peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. Look at my hands. Put your hand into my side. No more disbelief. Believe. Thomas responded to Jesus, my Lord and my God. And Jesus replied, do you believe because you see me? Happy are those who don't see and yet believe. And then Jesus did many other miracle, miraculous signs by, in his disciples' presence, signs that aren't recorded in this scroll. But these things are written so that you will believe that Jesus is the Christ, God's Son, and that believing you will have life in his name. This is a word of God for us, the people of God. Well, if you joined us last week, then you know that we celebrated a very special day, Easter Sunday, which has always been the holiest day in the Christian calendar. It's the day when we proclaim the resurrection of Jesus, a day when death no longer has the final word, when fear is vanquished, undone by the power of God's love. And from John's gospel, it's a day when we are invited to once again come and see. If we take that invitation seriously, we find that Jesus is not in the tomb. He is among us. Easter is as much an announcement of where Jesus is as it is where he is not. Jesus is on the move. He's embodied with the holes in his hands and a wound in his side. Jesus goes on ahead of us. He also comes so very close to us. 
And as people seeking to follow Jesus' lead, we would do well to ask the question, where is he going? What is the path before us, and, and where does it take us? Now, as I reflect on that question, I find myself feeling the urgency of the moment we are in. These are critical times. More than ever before, we don't know what the future will hold. We also don't know how long this moment will last. On Monday, the New York Times published an article about the fact that our economy is unlikely to quickly recover. We will not experience a boom as the president would like. Things will not just go back to normal. There will be no green light, but more like a series of flashing yellows. It will come back in spurts, gradually, perhaps not fully until we have a vaccine, which is still over a year away, and that's being optimistic. What we are experiencing now may, in fact, be more than temporary. Some parts of our lives now may, in fact, be permanent. And so we might ask the question, what kind of faith, what kind of community will make people want to come back? The way in which Jesus interacts with his disciples here in the Gospel of John is telling. We find the disciples afraid. They are hiding, in fact. You might say they are sheltering in place. Their world has been shattered. Their hopes for a Messiah who would triumph over Rome in glorious fashion have been dashed. Their community is broken without a hope for the future. Jesus comes among them somehow. He appears before them. Peace be with you. He shows them his hands, his side. For me, the intimacy is telling. I imagine his gentle tone, his life that cannot be extinguished. He has Nothing more to prove. Jesus meets the disciples in the midst of the fear and speaks a word of peace. If you've ever wondered what the presence of God feels like, unexplainable peace is a good description to start with. Thomas isn't there, though. Presumably, they sent him out into the unknown to get the week's worth of groceries. Thomas doesn't see any of this, and of course, he doesn't believe. Would you? I'm not sure that I would. I like Thomas. I understand where he's coming from. He makes sense to our modern Enlightenment sensibilities. He wants the material evidence. He is clear. He wants the proof. And without it, he won't believe. Maybe that's exactly how you feel. You know, throughout my ministry, I've had the pleasure of teaching quite a few confirmation classes. Normally, these classes are full of students, grades 7th through 10th, all initially there because their parents indirectly forced them to be. These students come with a lot of questions. They've heard all sorts of different things about what supposedly makes someone Christian. There are a scary number of questions about the rapture, I have to say. These things that Christians believe that seem, quite frankly, pretty weird and a little old-fashioned and maybe more than just a little mysterious. Confirmation students tend to think about faith as an all or nothing.
proposition. Either it makes total sense or it doesn't. Either I have faith or I don't. And so, of course, they think that they don't have faith. They have too many questions, too much doubt. Faith couldn't possibly be for them. I often find myself telling these teenagers again and again in different but similar ways that Christian faith isn't really like that. Nobody really holds their faith as a monolith, unchanging, unalterable, forever and ever. At least nobody who's taking their faith really seriously. Faith isn't about subduing uncertainty or answering every question with an undeniable fact until there is no more room for doubt at all. Such a faith would be rather boring. It would lead to a life that isn't very interesting or fulfilling. Faith and doubt are a part of the same natural cycle that we all experience on our journey with and towards God. What we read in John's Gospel reveals that Jesus engages folks in their doubt. And so even though there are many who may, Jesus doesn't shun Thomas. There's no pity party, no judgment. Jesus doesn't demand that Thomas assert the ultimate authority of Torah or make some sort of creedal confession. There isn't a box to check or a test to pass. That's not how Jesus operates. That isn't the way that love works. Jesus comes close to him, holds out his nail-pressed hands for Thomas to touch. In the midst of Thomas's very real doubt, God comes with a very real body of Jesus, comes right up to him disarms him of all of his what-ifs and if-onlys. Touch my hands. Feel the depth of who I am. I am right here for you. In an age when we are debating the possibility of no longer shaking hands, Jesus' offer of connection without condemnation is simply stunning. This radical kind of connection matters, especially in our age of virtual meetings and social distancing. There are so many ways that, that I'm noticing our culture's renewed longing for community for care, for connection. This virus has a way of clarifying what's really important about our lives, what matters, and therefore also what no longer matters. This can be a great gift for us as people of faith, as a community. When we do have in-person worship gatherings again, and we will, If we say to folks, welcome, come in. Here are some volunteer opportunities for you. We need you to help us keep this place going. People are going to quickly discern that this community might not matter. However, if we say to folks, I'm so glad you're here. We want to meet you in your needs hear your questions, learn of your struggles, sit with your doubt. This is a community of hope and depth and grace. It's here for you. Then we could be a community that matters, a community that people want to come back to, 
a beloved community where we actually meet the real needs of our neighbors, of Oak Park, of Chicago, of our world. The church is a tough, the church is a place for tough questions, for lament, for joy, for a hope that doesn't easily fade. It's a place where we speak up for those on the margins, where we come close to those who live in fear of what tomorrow may bring. Jesus' words to those in fear was peace. His word to those with doubt was, here I am, hold my hand. No requirements, no justification, no barriers to entry. Just an offer of another way. Our world needs this type of faith now more than ever. May this faith be yours here and now. In the name of the resurrected one, Jesus the Christ, amen.
I now invite you to join me in our time of prayer. You are invited to submit prayer requests at this time as well as if you would like to. You can type them into the chat, recognizing that those will be publicly viewable prayers. If you desire more privacy, you can go to our webpage and submit your prayer requests through the, clicking on the button that says prayer requests. Please join me now in an attitude of prayer. Impossible God, you make all things possible. You make all things new. You raised Christ from the tomb. You continue to bring forth life out of death. You raise flowers from the earth after the cold winter. We know you will bring forth life again. In this time, may we deepen our trust in you. May we strengthen our faith in humanity that love can overcome fear and hate. May you help our leaders to lead justly, guided by wisdom and inspired by love. God of life, we pray for those who are bowed down under the weight of hunger, homelessness, injustice, uncertainty, anxiety, or despair. We lift up all those on the front lines, the first responders and essential workers who are taking risks with their health to help save lives and slow the spread of the virus by enabling others to shelter in place. Please keep them safe. We also lift up all those incarcerated, including Kathleen's nephew, Ben, and all those who are isolated and alone in this anxious time. We particularly remember Kylie this morning and pray that she and all who are longing for comfort and support receive it. God of hope, we trust in your righteousness and depend on your love. Be near to those on whose behalf we call upon you to those who face sorrow, illness, injury, or death. Our heart goes out to all who have been directly impacted by COVID-19, and we especially ask prayers for David B's student who has lost seven relatives to this disease in the past few weeks. May Karen, Glenda, and her sons feel the warmth of your presence and sustaining power of your love as they grieve David's recent death from leukemia. Be with Shannon and her family as they grieve the recent passing of Shannon's mother. Give them peace. We pray for healing for Joan's cousin Kathy, Jeff's cousin Sue, and several mothers in our community, Eunice, Connie, and Evelyn Kay. Give all of them and us hope and stamina for the journey ahead. God of joy, we thank you for all the things that you have done, are doing right this very minute, and will do in the future. We give you thanks for the opportunity to celebrate birthdays, including Mary's daughter, Angie, and my daughter, Asha's. And we celebrate the blessing of family, related by blood or by choice. In particular, we give thanks for all families reunited in this pandemic. Give us the strength to continue to love each other and be patient with each other. We give thanks for the dedication and creativity of all those who have enabled us to continue to worship together as a beloved community during this challenging time and for the beautiful music that touches and restores our souls. Receive now our personal joys and concerns as we are in silent prayer. Steadfast God, preserve us in your love that we might speak your praise and bless you forever. In the name of the Holy One, the risen Christ, who teaches us to pray the Lord's Prayer. I invite you now to join me in saying the Lord's Prayer, praying in the manner or language that is most familiar to you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We have heard the words spoken and sung. Now we have the opportunity to respond with our gifts of financial resources and loving care towards one another. Our gifts, financial, spiritual, from the heart, our gifts rooted in the blessings of nature, these guide us when we serve as the hands of God on earth, when we protect the weak and voiceless, when we walk gently on the soil. Please let us be generous with our time, talent, and treasure. We can offer our financial gifts by going to the website, pilgrimoakpark.org, and clicking on giving. Offerings can be made by way of phone, computer, or check mailed to the church office. Thank you. in singing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Join me in prayer. Holy Spirit, we ask that these gifts of resources be used in ways that are pleasing to you. Use every part of us, the emotions we are ashamed of or embarrassed by, the financial resources we gathered, the love we have shared. Use our gifts to care for creation and the creatures and beings in whom you delight, whether or not they are known to us and wherever they might reside. Amen. I have a few announcements to share for the good of the community. Immediately following worship today, you are all invited to join us for this week's virtual fellowship hour hosted by me and Russ Silver. This week, we're going to try a new format using breakout rooms on Zoom. We'll all gather together for a few minutes for a few instructions, then split into breakout rooms for about 15 minutes to chat and catch up. Then we'll get back together as a group for any news or sharing of announcements. You'll find instructions for joining this online event on our website. The Crop Walk is on May 3rd. It will be different this year than it has been in years past, although the need to raise funds for hunger relief here and worldwide has never been greater. This year there will be a short virtual rally and then people can walk wherever they want or even walk virtually. Check our website, what's happening at Pilgrim email or the tidings for more information on how you can support Team Pilgrim by registering to walk, making a donation, or doing both. Pastor Colin is still in the process of settling in and looking forward to meeting all of you as soon as feasible, either via email, Zoom, or phone call, and of course, eventually in person. 
Please reach out to him by calling the church office or sending an email to colin.knapp at pilgrimoakpark.org. And now I invite you to join us in the singing of our final hymn. I'd like to invite everyone at home to please join me in singing them, I Will Trust in the Lord. We'll sing two verses. benediction. May the God of peace lead you and guide you. Take heart, go in peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.